Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to make uh, custom pieces for games such as like let's say you play Warhammer and you wanted your own custom pieces or something like that. I'm just gonna run you through some very basic lessons on how you can create a model, prepare it for printing, and then get it 3D printed. Okay. So this should you should be able to follow along even if you don't have any real background in 3D modeling. If you do have a background, this might be more simple for you than you need. So you could probably find some other tutorials that go into a little more advanced work. But just when I was starting out, I had a hard time finding any anything to help me. So I thought I'd make one for those of you who are starting out. You maybe you're not interested so much in learning the 3D modeling aspect, but you still want to be able to kind of make some cool stuff. We're going to start off with a, just a very basic simple miniature. It's not one that we'd actually probably use as a game miniature, but you can take these principles, practice, and as you get better you can add more stuff and everything. What you will need are three programs to follow along. There are three uh, free programs that we're going to be using. So you can go, go onto websites and download these for free. Let's go do a, a search on the internet. So the first one you're going to want is called Daz Studio 4.5. Blender is the second one we're going to use, and then NetFab Studio. So once you downloaded these three programs, or you know, just follow along, you can do this later. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, we're going to be using three of these. So the first one we're going to use in the first part of the tutorial is Daz Studio. So what we're going to be doing in here is setting up a model, the basic shape of a model that we want to use for our miniature. So when you first download the program, Assuming you got the 4.5 or even the 4.0 version, you should have this generic model. Okay, this is the Genesis model. The nice thing with the Genesis model is you can do a lot of shaping with it, and it is manifold. So I guess there's two really good things about it. So first of all, the shaping. If you go to the shaping here, you should have some dials on the right. Uh, if it doesn't open up quite here, just click around on these buttons. It'll show you various shapes you can do. If you're using the free version, you won't have all the ones you see on my screen, but you should have the basic female. So I'm just going to make a girl walking in the park sort of a model today. So just, you know, turn that up to 100% female. But there's other things just to show you what else you can do with Genesis. If you get some of the evolution morphs and the creature morphs, then there's other things that you could do. Like, let's say I wanted to give them a monstery head. You know, they'll have all these dials or a cow's head. Okay, and then there's other, you know, you can adjust the face, nose. So there's a lot of tweaking you can do with the Genesis model. And the other thing that's good about the Genesis model in terms of 3D printing is it's what we call manifold. Manifold means that the mesh, or kind of the wireframe that makes up the model, is, a lot of people use the word watertight. So if you imagine that this model were a hollow container, you could fill it with water and the water wouldn't leak out anywhere. So the Genesis uh, one is nice. Even even if you're using a program like Sculptris, you can actually import this in there and adjust it in there, which I've had to do for a couple different projects. So right now we're just going to do a basic girl, okay? And uh, you know, if you wanted to tweak the face a little bit more, that's whatever. So first thing we want to put on her is some clothing. So also that should be free with your program is you should have. Um, the fantasy dress, something called a morphing fantasy dress. I'm pretty sure this came for free with the model. So you should have this. So just right double click it and it puts it on. Now you'll notice there's some poke through. So you can see her skin. Well, it just right click the dress and then say fit Gen MFD to Genesis. And then it'll fit it right to her. It'll conform it right to her body. And the nice thing with Genesis clothing and the Genesis model is no matter what shape and or size you make your model, it'll make the clothing fit. That's one of the big advantages to the Genesis model. Okay, over, over using some of the older models. All right, now she needs some hair. Hair can be the tricky one to deal with in getting something ready for 3D print. Sometimes the hair meshes are kind of convoluted and they're not typically manifold. And I was having a hard time with the ones that came for free with the program, but if you go to sharecg.com, you can find other things. And I found one person who made a lot of hairstyles and, uh, and with unrestricted use. You always want to check the license agreements uh, when you're 3D printing. So with anything you get through Daz Studio, you should be okay. It is a gray area with their EULA, their license agreement, but they've okayed three, for 3D printing. But anything you get from anybody else, you need to make sure that their license agreement says that you can use it. So this is a hair called Kolomi, and it's by somebody named Mylochka from sharecg.com. And she had unrestricted use on this hair, which means I can do whatever I want with it. 
And so I'm going to use this one because I've already used it before and I know it has a fairly straight mesh. Okay. Now, if you want to know what the mesh actually looks like, it's not that. Okay, you're not going to be getting fine detailed hair strands in the mesh. That's actually an illusion created by a texture map. So if you go to your surfaces tab and you want to turn that off just so you see what the mesh is going to look like. So like you know, when you get later on and you kind of want to start looking at the hair to see what it actually is going to look like, you need to turn that off. So I'm going to select the hair, okay, and uh, I need to turn off the maps. So if I go to diffuse color, there's a map there which is the texture image. And then there's often an opacity image as well. So just turn off both of those. And that's basically the shape you should be getting for the hair. Now the hair itself is too thin to print. You're going to notice the dress as well if you kind of go down here. Look how thin that is. That 3D printing isn't going to print stuff like that. We're going to have to adjust both of these. We're going to do that in Blender later. Okay. So right now we've got uh, hair and we've got a dress. Now you want to make sure the hair is attached to the head because we're going to move the model to pose her. And in order for the hair to follow along, we need to make sure it's parented. Now this one does come parented uh, because I had the model highlighted. It doesn't always. And so if it's not, or if it's in the wrong position, you can move it around with the pose to get it on the head and then you'll have to parent it. Uh, if it says none, then you have to just scroll up and click where you want it. So you just put it on Genesis head. Okay. If you needed to move, like if it didn't show up right in, in the right place, you can use these translation, you know, stuff to move the hair up and down and get it in the right place. All right, so now we're going to pose our model. So just right click the model and then make sure you hit select Genesis. Make sure you're not selecting just the dress because it'll come up with both options. We're just going to give her a real easy pose here. So if you go to, you should have the Daz Genesis poses. Again, these should be free. Go to basic female and I'm just going to use uh, female fashion one. So click on that and it puts her in a nice pose. The reason I'm using this pose is because it puts her hands fairly close to her hips and you'll see why that's a little bit important soon. The other problem you're going to notice is that her dress didn't move to conform with her legs and I have that hard time sometimes with the dress. I have an easier time working with this dress if I shorten it a little. So go ahead, right click on the dress and this time you want to make sure you, collect, you select the dress and not the Genesis model. And then we're going to shape it, or parameters I guess, and go to styles if it's not already there. Make that dress a little shorter. This makes it a little easier to work with. Okay. You also have different areas in here you can move and mod, you know, the dress. You can also just select portions or parts of the dress you want to work with. So let's, uh, let's take a look what we can do. So front left, we want to put forward a little bit. So we just want to make sure we're covering her legs here. Front right. Okay. So I'm going to have to do some more specific fine tuning. So I'm just going to select here and just use these dials a little. There we go. Just want to make sure her legs are inside her dress, basically. So it's kind of got a swooping look to it. That yeah, should be fine. Looks like she's kind of walking along in a breeze or whatever. Okay. So I think that's good. So now what we need to do is export the model. Uh, send this to Blender. So what we're going to do is go to File, Export. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop and we'll just call it Girl for now. And I'm saving it as a wavefront object. Now, uh, there are various options you have. There's even one that says Blender. Don't use those right now. You'll see why shortly. Uh, anytime you export it, there's different strategies the computer uses to prepare the model. Uh, and the Blender will import them differently. The way I found best so far is to just click these checks all on the left. Don't check anything else. So you should have all these ones checked. Should say custom here. And then all these I just turn off. Okay, so we'll accept that. And there you go. So we'll close our uh, window there. And now the, um, this is the end of this part of the tutorial. I'm kind of breaking it up into shorter chunks. The next part I'll be showing you how to work with that model in Blender.